So hello everybody, I'm here with Puerto Rican composer Jose Solis. Here he is. Hi Jose. Hello, how are you doing? Thank you for inviting me. No problem, we're excited to have you today. So um, if you haven't watched his the video where I'm performing his piece, Little Boxes, Nine Variations on a Theme by Malvina Reynolds, you can click on the link. I'll put one on the screen somewhere. Somewhere in there I will put a link on the screen. And also at the end of the video, I'll put those links up there again. And I'll also put a link um, to watch this interview in Spanish. Que si la quieres mirar en español, voy a poner un enlace para mirar la entrevista en español. So, without further ado, so Jose, when did you start composing? Well, it's a little bit difficult to pinpoint, but I started uh, like making up songs when I was a little kid. Uh, but I actually didn't ha start writing uh, music until I was like 14 when I started going to the uh, Escuela Libre de Musica. Uh, then, but most of what I did at that time was um, self-taught. Regretfully, there are no composition teachers in any of the schools of Puerto Rico, so I have to look for books and ask questions and look for more books and ask more questions to people who could answer them, which were not that many. Where did you study and with whom? All right, uh, like, well, after all that long period of me studying on my own and looking for different kinds of books um, on composition, on orchestration, on um, everything that I could get my hands on. It was not until I got to college that a professor named Javier de la Torre uh, started teaching me some things of uh, composition. Uh, he was uh, given uh, private classes uh, additionally to the classes that he gave at the university. Then, of course, uh, uh, more recently, I went into the com uh, Conservatorio, uh, Conservatorio de Musica de Puerto Rico, Conservatory of Music of Puerto Rico, uh, and studied with um, uh, Alfonso Fuentes, which was my teacher all those four years. So, in general, how would you describe your music? Mm -hmm. Well, my music is tonal with uh, a lot of extended um, tones, uh, chords, and, but it will change according to what I'm trying to uh, present in any uh, particular piece. Like for example, in the one that uh, is related to this video, uh, it's a lot simpler than my usual harmony. and. Um, also simpler than my usual uh, rhythmic patterns and, and uh, rhythmic uh, techniques. So what compositional styles have you experimented with and or included in your work? Well, here in the com uh, conservatory, the professors uh, ask us to uh, do everything from uh, Renaissance to, to modern, but particularly in my composition style, I uh, I do more a kind of um, modern <laughs> counterpoint, uh, very um, influenced by the Baroque counterpoint, but with more modern harmony, like I mentioned. So, what was your inspiration for the piece Little Boxes? Actually, I was watching the uh, series uh, Weeds, actually binging on it, watching it like during a, a several weeks, uh, every day, and somebody recommended the series to me. Uh, and when I started listening, uh, uh, watching it, I heard this the song that they use for the intro, which is this one. And uh, by the like the third or fourth season, they start putting different versions of the song. So it occurred to me, why not do a series of um, um, variations on on the um, on the actual song, uh, and that's how I I did it. While I watch, I was finishing watching the series. I was composing on the side, 
uh, this series of, of variations. So, who are your musical influences? Musical influences? Well, I live in a Caribbean island, so I have a lot of influences from uh, Latin music, even though you might not hear it uh, completely in this piece, but ma in many others. But classically, I'm more influenced by, first of all, Bach, uh, like I mentioned before, um, and then Richard Strauss, and who also is very polyphonical, but with a more, much more complex harmony, uh, or actually much more romantic comedy, because uh, Bach's harmony not necessarily is that simple. Uh, and of course, Stravinsky, in terms of his uh, polyrhythmic uh, techniques, uh, basically those are my most important influences, um, and a little bit of the um, uh, of the minimalists also. So tell us a little bit about your other compositions. Well, I have lots of different kinds of compositions uh, from mu pieces for uh, chamber music, lots of pieces for choir, lots of pieces for uh, singer and piano. Uh, if you have played several of the pieces for piano, you know that when I do pieces for, for voice and piano, the piano is not a mere accompaniment to the, to the melody. It's, it, it's almost like an orchestra. A mini orchestra for that particular song and paints lots of things and sets a lot of things of what the song is doing. Uh, and I have pieces for orchestra uh, of different kinds. So the main two things that are the same that might be the same in or in most of that pieces is the way that I use harmony, which not necessarily it's it stays in the same. Uh, it, 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 I don't use tonality the way most people will, will certainly do it. Um, you might be more or less in one tonality, but that's, it, it will vary a lot. And uh, polyrhythm, uh, polyrhythmic uh, textures, which is uh, what I use in many of the pieces also. So what do you want your audience to feel or understand after hearing your music? Well, the main thing that I would like uh, the audience to feel, if you want to say it like that, is that, huh, that's interesting. There's something there that I want to listen to again. Even if it's not uh, immediately after, maybe something stays in their mind, and after a while they say, okay, I have to listen to this again to see what was it. You know what was interesting here, what was interesting, now. or what that particular thing with that rhythm or that harmony that caught my attention in such and such place. So mainly to listen to it at once again. So, in what direction do you think contemporary classical or art music is headed in the future? I see it going on two different paths. One is the act, the real, uh, well, we can say it's the real academic music, which is mostly music that will ha sound very harsh to most people's ear, even to uh, a lot of classical uh, musicians, that music will sound very harsh to them. Um, as in history, that happened very, very often with many composers that the new compositions, because they are different, they are trying to do something different than the ones before, will sound harsh to their ears. But uh, Right now, we're even more separated from that music because also of historical things. Now, the other uh, direction is also what I consider to be classical music, and it's, but it's a lot more uh, accessible to most people. It, it is influenced by what is done in movies, by what is done in video games. And in fact, for many people, video game, the music of video games and movies is the main one. Uh, it's their classical music. And many composers are starting to go to that to do um, their new compositions. That it, it has a lot of modern elements, but it's not completely and totally harsh. 
uh, I'm, I'm doing lots of compositions also in that way. And I guess that in a way, uh, little boxes falls into that. So what advice can you give to the next generation of composers? Well, the main thing that a composer needs to do before he creates is get informed. I mean, if you're going to do popular music, you probably don't need that much other than your what you have listened to your to popular music. But if you are doing classical, you need to really listen to lots and lots of music of all kinds, but particularly classical. The reason, there are several reasons for that, many reasons for that, but the main ones will be that one, you understand the language, you understand what classical music is trying to do. The second one is that if you're trying to do something different uh, and you have not listened to the people in the past, you might be repeating what other people have done several times and probably better than you. So it's better to listen to uh, as much music as you can. A truck load. Okay, so I guess that's all we have time for for today. So thank you again, Jose, so much for being here and for answering our questions. If you have any more questions for Jose, just ask him in the comments. Um, and make sure you check out the video with me playing his piece, Little Boxes, Nine Variations on a Theme by Monkina Reynolds. And so I'll have a link for that here somewhere on the screen. And also a link to watch the interview in Spanish. So again, thank you so much, Jose. Thank you. And thank you for inviting <laughs> me again. <laughs> no problem. We love to have you here. So um, I hope everybody has a great day. Make sure you subscribe for more videos. And like I said, thank you for watching and have a fantastic day.